So here we are in After Effects. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at some of the different tracking options we have inside of After Effects. Now with motion tracking, we can track the movement of an object and then apply the tracking data for that movement to another object, such as another layer or an effect control point to create compositions in which images and effects follow the motion. You can also track multiple objects in a scene. In After Effects CS6, we have access to the 3D camera tracker, which allows us to track camera motion and place 3D objects in 2D footage much more easily. And as of After Effects CS5.5, we have access to the Warp Stabilizer, which is a fantastic tool to stabilize shaky footage. So let's look at some of the basic trackers here in After Effects. We're looking at a little clip here. Over here, I have the tracking window. And if you don't have this available, you can go up here to window, and then right down here is tracker. And you can dock that wherever you want, here, there, down here. I like it right here. And if we zoom up to 100%, and then we click track motion, it's going to give us this track point here. And to start, it gives us a single track point. This track point has a couple of parts to it. We have the center part right here, this little crosshairs, and that's the attach point. And that's where the layer or the effect control point is going to attach to after we track the movement. Then this first box here, this is the feature region. The feature region defines the element in the layer that's going to be tracked. The feature region should surround a very distinct visual element, preferably only one object in a scene. After Effects must be able to clearly identify the tracked feature throughout the duration of the track, despite changes in light, background, and angle. Then we have the outer box here, and this is the search region. The search region defines the area that After Effects will search to locate the tracked feature. So it's going to be looking at the detail that was in here in the next frame. When we make the search area big, it takes longer to track because it's looking for what was in here in a lot more places. If we keep it smaller, it speeds up the track, but we run the risk of the tracked feature leaving the search area because if it moves too far, After Effects is not gonna figure it out because it wasn't in the search region. If we click right in the center here, we can move this around and, and it's giving us kind of a zoomed in view. And for this type of tracker, After Effects is looking for a high contrast point, something that it can see frame to frame and that's not going to change too much. Now that doesn't mean that it can't move, it means that it's going to have a distinct visual kind of contrast point to be able to track from frame to frame. After Effects does a pretty good job of tracking things that have even a little bit of contrast, but if we try and track something like this right here, you can see that this area does not have a very distinct visual element in it because it looks very similar to all this. So check out what happens if we try and track. Whoa, hi -yo. After Effects literally has no idea what's going on. It's bouncing all over the place and it just can't get it. It can't figure it out because there's no distinct thing for it to grab onto and say, hey, this thing was the same here and in the next frame it's over here. So I'm gonna undo that and let's, let's attach it right here. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to grab onto this little edge here of this table and make some room here so you can see where the clip is. We're track forward and I'll zoom out so you can see how it's doing. Okay. So it jumped. Now sometimes this happens because the search region is not big enough or the feature region is not big enough. Now I know that that track point there, I'm gonna hit U on the keyboard, is got some good contrast, but for some reason it didn't really like that. So let's try making this a little bit bigger and making the search area just a hair bigger. Maybe we get that right to the outside there and we'll try tracking again and see how close it gets. Ah, look at that. Now it's locked right on there. Stop the track, I'm just gonna go see, good. It's going to go right to the end, and that right there is the last frame. So what we can do here, we'll, we'll zoom out here, we'll go to the first frame that we tracked here, which is right here, and we'll track backwards. And look at that. We have our track point stuck right there. Now with this information, basically what it's tracking, it's tracking position. But you can see that there are some other options here. We have rotation and scale. 
Now, one track point cannot track rotation and scale because it's basically just tracking this point. And this point, it can't tell if it's rotating because it doesn't have anything else to reference to. So if we wanted to track rotation, we click this and you see it brings up another point. And between these two, we can figure out how it's rotating. If we click scale, you see it didn't do anything. What scale is going to do is it's going to look at these two points and it's going to track them. And if they move away from each other, that means that the object is getting larger. And if they get closer to each other, that means the object is getting smaller. So it can track scale. And so between these three options here, we can track position in the X and Y dimension. We can track rotation and we can track scale. Now, all this is a 2D track, meaning with this type of tracker information, After Effects does not know that the objects are moving towards the camera or away from the camera. It doesn't even know that there is a camera. All it's seeing is contrast points and where they are between frame to frame. And that's pretty much it. Get rid of these guys. So with this tracking data, what we can do is we can apply it and what would we want to apply it to? Well, we can apply it to a whole bunch of things. Maybe we want to have an object. Let's grab this PNG here and let's bring that down into our comp. And let's put that right here. We'll scale it down and we'll throw that here. Why would we want to do that? I don't know, but I'm just showing you this is, this is an option, something that we can do with this tracking data. We'll put it right here. And because this doesn't really change too much relative to the table, that's going to be okay. We jump back over to our layer window. And what we can do is we're going to click on the track point and then we're going to say edit target. And now we have some options. If we had more layers in our comp. We would see more options here. I'm going to select map PNG and then I'm going to hit apply. And when I hit apply, I have even more options. I can apply X and Y. I can apply X only or Y only. I want to choose X and Y. This is what it's going to do. It now stuck that object right to the table and it looks a little funny. So we can hit F4, turn on motion blur. And now look, now it really looks like it's kind of part of that scene. I mean, it's not exact because it's not a 3D track, but you can see how you can track things in a scene very, very easily using that one very simple point tracker. Now, After Effects has other trackers that we can use. There's a stabilize motion option here. So we click that and initially it'll bring up one track point. So if we run this and we attach that to a point and we track and then say we apply, what we're going to do if we don't select a different target is it's going to apply what it's analyzed to this layer. And the result is that it's going to stabilize around that one track point. Now we even have more options than that. We can track rotation as well. And now what we can do is we can apply it to two points and we can analyze this. And what that's going to do is it's going to track the rotation and position so that if my son Lincoln here, if he moves his head and those are markers that I put on his face to track, I did that a long time ago. But now what it's going to do is it's going to track each one of those and it's going to track position and rotation. So we don't need to track it all the way. We'll just apply it. And now look what it's done. It's now moving the rest of the comp here around those two points. It's rotating them. If we were to drop a guide on here, check this out. Those two points are going to pretty much stay right there. And so that's what stabilized motion does. And we're going to look at that later on as well. We also have some other options here. We can do a perspective corner pin and we can just get the raw tracking data. We're going to look at perspective corner pin later on in this course as well. Now we also have some other options here. So far we've looked at track motion and stabilize. Warp stabilize is one that if you've used After Effects at all, you probably would have heard of because it's an amazing tool to clean up some pretty nasty shots. For example, this was shot with a 300 millimeter non-stabilized lens and it's a little bit jittery. In fact, it even has some jello in it. Now this is not bad jello and this comes from a CMOS sensor because they don't output the read of the sensor all at the same time. What happens is if there's a shake or a jitter, a really sharp movement like right there, 
the imager is reading, and I can't remember if it reads top down or down up, it reads this part of the information, but by the time it gets down to the bottom, the camera has moved so much that it wobbles. It looks like it's wobbling. You see that? Now the world didn't all of a sudden just skew on us. What happened was it read that way, but I've already put the warp stabilizer on here and I'll show you what this looks like. I'll set this to fit and check it out without the warp stabilizer, right? You can see that there's definitely some jitters in there. If this was the only part of the clip that I had to use, I'd say that that was pretty bad. And we can try and stabilize motion like I just showed you. That's not going to correct for that warble wobble stuff. And because there's not a lot of very distinct, super sharp points in here, it may not track super well. But with warp stabilize, it cleans up this shot like a boss. You can't even tell that it jiggled in there. And that's because it has this option for subspace warp where it kind of looks for those jello effects and then corrects them. Now, some it just can't correct for, but this one you can see looks perfect. Now there's even another tracking option and that one's called the 3D camera tracker. Now I've already tracked this because it does take a little bit of time here. And what the 3D camera tracker does is it looks at your scene and it tracks various points and then it kind of figures out the geometry of the scene. It can tell that, you know, if things are moving faster, then they're probably in the foreground. If things are moving slower, then they're probably in the background. If there's too much motion, if there's like hundreds of people walking or a lot of things moving in the scene, then this 3D camera tracker is not going to work so hot and you have to do some masking. But for something basic like this, it actually does a really pretty decent job. And so what we can do here is once it's figured this out, what we can do is we can select a few of these points and you can see it's what it's doing is it's triangulating and we can find an area where it looks like we can attach a surface to like right here. And we can actually select a whole bunch of these to get maybe an even more accurate kind of calculation. And we can have this create a camera and attach text. And now look at this. If we click off of here. That text is glued in 3D space right to our layer. And it's pretty stinking amazing. All of this right inside of After Effects. And we can do cool stuff with this, like we can export this data to Cinema 4D, which comes with After Effects, Cinema 4D Lite, and we can create some really cool compositions with some 3D elements, all inside of After Effects and Cinema 4D. You can try and use the built-in extrusion tools in After Effects to do some of that, and do environment maps and shadows and stuff like that too. I find that the quality on those is not super hot, they probably work a little bit better with a third party plugin like Element from Video Copilot, but we're going to be taking a look at more of that stuff later in this course. Another thing that you have at your disposal is something called Mocha. So say we wanted to track something on his face and we wanted to track this surface. We could try and do it with one of the point trackers, but that would be very difficult to do because there's not a lot of distinct points on his face. And so tracking that is going to be really tricky. The 3D camera tracker is not really going to help us here because there's not a 3D camera move. And the warp stabilizer is not going to do anything because this shot is not moving. So another option that comes with After Effects is Mocha for AE. And now Mocha is a third party tracking tool. And just to give you an idea of what this looks like, I'm going to bring up Mocha. So check this out. I have this project open. We're going to look at some ways to use Mocha later in this course. I have this clip here of this guy. And what I did was I created a shape and what Mocha does, Mocha is a planar tracker. Now I don't mean plane like airplane or plane as in like not interesting. It tracks planes in 3D space, grounds, walls, anything that's roughly on the same three dimensional plane, Mocha can track and it doesn't track points. It tracks a group of pixels which makes it a good bit more powerful than the basic After Effects point tracker because it'd be really hard to track a feature on this guy's forehead here because there's no high contrast point. And if I wanted to get something to stick to his face, that would be really difficult to do. But in Mocha, check this out. I've already tracked this because it does take some time and I've turned on this thing called a surface tool and I'll turn on the grid too. And I'll play this down and look at that. This grid 
is glued to this guy's face. And when he turns, it looks like the grid is moving in 3D space. It's actually not, though. It's tricking your eye. It's not turning in 3D space. It's just kind of adjusting the shear and the perspective and the rotation of this and the position. And so Mocha, we can do things that are pretty much impossible to do in After Effects. We can track things that have no distinct features, and this will track the rotation and the scale. And what we can do in Mocha is we can take this detail and we can export it and paste it right into After Effects. So if I have this clip open, what I could do is I could take this information, I could put something like a mask or a helmet on this guy, and I could paste it right there, and it's going to stick to his face. Now, it's not going to wrap around his face in 3D, but it'll have a really cool effect. And we'll look at that more later in this course. So that gives you the basic kind of feel for the types of tracker tools that we're going to use throughout this course. Point trackers, stabilize motion using position, scale, and rotation. We're going to look at using the built-in camera tracker and the warp stabilizer. And then later in this course, we're also going to look at doing kind of a complicated project using Mocha for After Effects. All of this comes in the newer versions of After Effects, and the latest version, After Effects CC, also comes with Cinema 4D Lite. So we're going to be looking at some really basic projects in those later on in this course. Now that you understand the basic tracking tools that we have available in After Effects, you're ready to move on to the next lesson, where we're going to be checking out how to track and replace some very basic background elements.